Last January, the Liberal Party of the Philippines celebrated its Diamond Jubilee. The founder of the party, Manuel Rojas, also served as the inaugural president of the Third Philippine Republic, which was founded 75 years ago on July 4, 1946. It is therefore my honor to present to you CLD's digital publication entitled 75 Years of Freedom and Democracy in the Philippines, Anthology of Great Liberal Speeches. Since 1946, the history of the country and that of the Liberal Party have been entwined. Rising from the ashes of World War II, the Philippines became an independent nation. Manila was being rebuilt after being flattened and burned to the ground. This was the fruition of Filipino centuries of struggle against various colonial powers from Spain, the United States, and Japan. Though the Liberal Party was founded after the war, some of its members, like President Rojas and Senate President Tofito Solonga, were freedom fighters when the Japanese invasion began. For many, this served as the crucible that forged their characters, that prepped them for equally or even more daunting tasks, the building of a nation after a foreign invasion, and for those who survived even longer, the dismantling of a homegrown dictatorship. And with freedom and democracy, the cherished blessings of justice, the rule of law, a functioning bureaucracy, and prosperity in a free market economy became possible. Rojas's realistic and head-on approach in dealing with the many challenges of a war-ravaged country, economically still dependent on American aid and investment, proved crucial. The Rojas and Quirino presidencies built the foundations of a new republic. By the 1950s, the Philippines was second only to Japan in terms of per capita income in Asia. Rojas and later Quirino led the nation that must rise from World War II exacerbated by an economy in ruins and a communist insurgency in the countryside. It was the next liberal president, Giusdato Macapagal, who addressed the roots of rural unrest through land reform. This book is divided into seven chapters. Chapter one, Building a Nation, highlights the speeches of the three liberal party presidents during the third Philippine Republic. Chapter two, The Golden Age of the Philippine Senate, is a compilation of the brilliant speeches in and outside Congress of LP senators when the Senate during this period became the forum where in public discourse reached its pinnacle. Chapter one and two are overlapping, covering the period from July 4, 1946 and September 20, 1972. Chapter three, Mayhem and Martyrdom, covers the period from the Declaration of Martial Law from September 21, 1972 to the ouster of Marcos on February 25, 1986. The next chapter, Rebuilding a Nation, covers the presidencies of Carazon Aquino, Fidel Ramos, Joseph Estrada, and Gloria Arroyo, where the party became either an opposition party or a member of the ruling coalition. Chapter 5, Party in Power, are the speeches delivered by President Benigno Simeon Aquino III, cabinet secretaries, and members of both houses of the legislature from July 1, 2010 to June 30, 2016. With the recent death of President Noy Noy, the Filipino people reminisced on the legacy of a man so humble that he did not trumpet his own administration's many accomplishments. Among these are unprecedented economic growth, integrity and competence in public service, assertion of our sovereignty, especially with regards to the West Philippine Sea and prestige in the international arena. Chapter six, Living in Interesting Times, features the speeches of LP leaders during the current administration of President Duterte. And finally, chapter seven, Kindred Spirits, features the speeches of the three most prominent allies of the Liberal Party, namely President Corazon Aquino and Senators Lorenzo Tanyada and Jose Yocno. As the party in power during the administrations of Presidents Rojas, Quirino, Macapagal, and Aquino III, the Liberal Party remained steadfast. They governed with principled leadership and moved towards realistic reforms despite the inherent limitations of real politic. As a member of the ruling coalition, the Liberal Party would adopt the principle of critical collaboration. This was most evident when LP became the main political force in the removal of the US bases in the Philippines which proved that the party would take the right road and not the path of least resistance. 
Clark and Subic being hubs of industry and economic productivity since then, validated Elpis' assertion that long-term gains would far outweigh short-term inconveniences, even at considerable political costs. While being part of the coalition of President Ramos, LP was in the forefront of protesting his attempts in changing the constitution. The Liberal Party ended its coalition with Presidents Estrada and Arroyo because of massive corruption and or electoral fraud. Corrupting the very institutions needed for a functional democracy, Gloria Arroyo and her political allies did not spare the Liberal Party from its vicious attacks and machinations. But the party remained stronger despite this, and LP's best and brightest rose to the occasion and ensured that the principles, that our principles would reign over political expediency. But then, as it is now, many of the most glorious chapters were and are the years when it was and is in the opposition. So the Marcos years, the likes of Jerry Rojas, Joe Visalonga, and Ninoy Aquino became the impassioned voices that blocked Marcos's attempts for absolute power. Headed for certain victory, the Liberal Party's main campaign in Plaza Miranda was bombed in 1971. The following year, the declaration of martial law saw many stalwarts incarcerated, tortured, and forced into exile. Several paid the ultimate price with their lives. President Noynoy Aquino and the entire Aquino family legacy, Vice President Lenny Robredo, Senator Rojas, Delima, Drilon, Pangilinan, among others, as well as the party in general, were and continue to be systematically and relentlessly demonized for political reasons and to derail the attention of the public from the incompetence of the Duterte government, especially its mishandling of the pandemic, as well as its propensity for authoritarianism and its abominable human rights record. Not since martial law has been being a critic of government posed this degree of personal danger as evident by the imprisonment of Senator De Lima and the extrajudicial killings of those red tagged by the army and other government officials. Freedom and democracy are continuing processes with accompanying obstacles and challenges. This book honors liberal party personalities who build the foundations of independence, democracy, development, and peace based on justice. They who advocated principles and policies towards these ends, and they who were incarcerated, tortured, or even killed protecting these ideals. Imprisoned, their spirits cannot be put in bondage, and those who are no longer with us, whether martyred or not, their legacies shall live for a long, long time hoping that this book would contribute to this end. Have a pleasant day and thank you very much.